just changing a, a basis. Changing the perspective at which you look at your data can uh, dramatically simplify uh, the problem and make it really cheap and easy to compute. And the best example of that is something that we all use every day on our phones, the, the fast Fourier transform. The, fa the Fourier transform, all it, all it does is changes the perspective. It rotates the way we look at data, and it turns big data problems into linear, easy problems, right? So, um, and, but that's not the only trick that does that. There are tons of them, tons of ways of changing uh, the perspective of looking at a problem to simplify things. And all I'm arguing is that you should, you should exhaust all of those possibilities. And if none of those things work, then maybe think about putting your stuff up on a cluster or something like that. Because otherwise, you know, what's the point? You know, some smart ass like me will come along and say, I just do that on my laptop. You know, I don't need a cluster. Uh, and finally, there's this package. I, I'm not the author of the algorithm, but I'm uh, it, the maintainer of this package, um, IRLBA on CRAN. Uh, which does really efficient singular value decompositions. That's undergoing a substantial rewrite with a lot of new uh, added capabilities that are coming online. It'll be submitted, the update will be submitted to CRAN uh, probably in a month. Um, and it, it's been on CRAN for seven years, so this is, a, this is not anything new, by the way. Um, uh, well, several versions of it. Um, so all, those are unreadable references, but I have <laughs> references for all of this stuff. And I'll, give it to Tim and we put it up on the website. So there you go. Thanks. Sorry about the display. Question for you. Yeah. Um, when you're faced with a new problem, are there any, um, I mean, you mentioned earlier about not putting your hands on the keyboard right away. Are there any um, common techniques that you go to to just think about a problem or prepare? Um, yeah, Wikipedia is your friend, right? You should go to <laughs> Wikipedia, for sure, right? I mean, it seems like a joke, right? But, you know, and it used to be when I was a, a kid and the internet was just starting, all of these internet references were questionable. But now, I think they've, the kinks have been worked out and you can say, oh, I've got this community detection problem for large graphs and put that into Google or go to Wikipedia and you will find algorithms that you should try. It's, it's usually right about these kinds of things. So I, I would just use the web, actually. Uh, unless you have specific domain knowledge about that. I mean, another thing is to make a friend with a numerical analyst, you know, or, or, a, or an applied statistician, right? You know, like, those guys are your, and gals are your friends, right? Because they, they know a lot of tricks, um, and they've seen a lot of things before. Uh, but, uh, uh, but, but, you know, barring that, uh, you know, Wikipedia is an, an excellent place to, to think sensibly about attacking a problem that you don't know anything about. Yeah. So how do we, as a community, fight back against? Like, every, no, I'm not saying fight. Well, I, look, no, no, no. That's the wrong. I'm just saying that. Look, you well, know. So like, let me explain. Like every job I look at, they're like, well, we only want people who've used to do. And I'm like, yeah. for what? You show them those slides. Rows. Show them those slides, right? Say, well, you know, sometimes it's useful, but often. You, Right, you exactly. Know, so you don't need it, you know. is there a way to turn the not that like Hadoop and all these have their place, right? Like they do. They the do. point you're making. Yeah. How do we steer the ship away from this? Because I feel like it's the new sexy. Like, yeah. Oh my God, we use parallel computing here. Yeah. Like, yeah but you're no, just ordering bagels. You know, <laughs> I, you know, in some some sense I'm speaking about, against my livelihood, right? Because I work on these large scale distributed computing projects, <laughs> um, and I just I just see them so often misused more often misused than used. Uh, so I, I felt that uh, somebody, you know, and McSherry as well, right? I mean, people are starting to say, look, you should think about things carefully. Um, uh, but uh, there's definitely a, it's a, it, it's the word, I mean, it's almost a fetish, right? People have with these, they do kind of things, you know, they just go nuts over them for no real reason. I, I don't know how to respond to that other than with like actual examples of like how to do something well. And R is better than people think. Like everybody says, oh, R is slow. But I have, I have no experience of R being slow, right? Like to, to me, I can run most things way faster than most people can run with, with, with anything, you know. Um, so I'm working at, along those lines. Uh, so those genomics examples, I have a GitHub page. Uh, that is just the start of it. It has just that principal components, but Matt Dowell and I, uh, the guy who wrote um, Data Table, 
are working on more examples because uh, recently uh, Arun and Matt put some interesting uh, range selection algorithms inside of data table that nobody knows about. And so we're, we're, and those are really useful for genomics. So we're writing up a bunch of examples along those lines. And it crushes, it's super, like, there's just no other, there's no faster way of doing it. And I've, I've been <laughs> testing against, like, really expensive, large scale systems like Vertica and stuff like that. And the data table stuff blows it out of the water. So, it, you know, uh, just show people examples. Uh, but by the way, that's a, they, if you don't, if you're not using data table, you should check it out because it's, it's extraordinarily fast. It, it has some, kind of semantic differences from data frames that can burn you if you're not careful. Um, but uh, it's worth it uh, for the speed. Uh, so. and I, I think a lot of times that people will be talking to do, and they actually want to talk about no SQL or unstructured data. And there are gob of products that will handle unstructured data for you. And um, what I've done is I've created a slide just for presentation purposes, where you have no or uh, no uh, big data up in one corner and SQL down in the other corner, and just draw a line that 90% of everything that you ever need to solve is in the relational structured data, and then you have a little blob that says no SQL that if it doesn't fit in that category, you can go to no SQL. Yeah, and that's why every the canonical Spark and example is word count. <laughs> That's exactly why they just like let's count let's just count through log files right that would you know what it was originally designed for and it worked great for that. Uh, if you've got uh, a petabyte of log data that you want to turn through it makes a lot of sense but that's not analysis in my book right that's not like you know that's just counting up some stuff and sure you know uh, by the way I mean R could do that as well uh, right there's this beautiful for each package by Steve Weston and uh, but you know that's 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 another topic. Yeah, we should. I mean, we're done, right? So, but yeah, I'll well, take. I just I'll get the sense around. that uh, the solutions that they're selling, you know, come out of a couple of mindsets. One of which is just throw iron at it, which is you know, you know, if I can make it work, and all I got to do is write the check, and I don't have to do any more incremental work because I've got a quote unquote turnkey solution. When yeah. Do that. You know, I, yeah, that's a really excellent point, right? Like, you know, using money instead of thinking right. um, to solve problems. And I think that's... Not everybody has your abilities available to them to solve every specific problem. It's not me. I, no, no, I, but what, what I'm saying, I'm saying I, like, here is something that, you know, all I got to do is write a check, and maybe it will take a lot of money, but I'll get my answer as opposed to five of the six guys I got working on it are going to take me down the wrong path and spend a lot of money, and I still don't get my answer. I think... So, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of the corporate mind think of if I throw money at it, I'll solve my problem, that's good enough. And yeah. I think that's what we're fighting here. I, I think you're, you've hit it right on the head. Uh, that's exactly, I concur completely. And it scares me a little bit uh, socially, right? Because we should be, instead of putting money on, into big iron, we should be put, putting money into education, right? And, and that's what our society, I think, is screwing up <laughs> on. Like, like that's we, a whole other discussion. You know, uh, but, but you could still put that in uh, corporate financial terms, right? As long as the productivity of the capital expenses are measured, if you consider a human as a capital expense and a machine as a capital expense, if you can find a way to equitably measure productivity across both of those systems, we do not do that I can today, get the solution in but, one month for two million dollars, or I can have a lot of little projects running in hope. It, it's the certainty, it's, it's the risk aversion that yeah. it gets to the expense of solution. Because yeah. there yeah. may be a cheaper way but I'm not so sure it's going to work, and I want the answer within two months. But you can only yeah. get the answer to the question you asked. That's right. No, I'm, I'm not so, so, Well, the problem is, like, if you just give it to a machine, it, it only knows how to ask one I, question, I, right? I realize there's blinders here. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not condoning that as the appropriate solution. I'm just explaining how one gets Yeah, no, I, you're, I think you're exactly right. That's right. I, I, I think guess. There's, so, yeah. there's a cool factor, though, too. I mean, a geek who can get on there, he can control, spin up hundreds or thousands of machines, you know, I think it's cooler button. to install stuff on. Uh, well, on but I mean, I, I think that, the, that that feeds into it. It's like you know, I got this power. I can. You could. It could. It doesn't even mythical. have. It doesn't even exist. Yes, yeah, it's mythical. It's you like, could, oh look, I have. You could, I can put a game through. interface. Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't even know the difference. So you got the, the result back. He's like, oh yeah, just 
this season. Yeah. So what you should do is sell a cluster to someone and charge them for it, and then just really run your archive. <laughs> <laughs> like it's two million dollars, and it just was like a buck fifty of electricity. <laughs> I'll recommend that to my boss. Yeah. <laughs> that, that might be a business strategy. It's a business strategy. <laughs> okay, so, thanks everybody. I'll stick yeah. around. Cool. That, that was. I really like the shine. Your shine.